What's going on guys? This is Pseudo Shu, and today we're going to talk about the basics of proxies. Before we jump in, uh, Blitz Proxies was kind enough to let me use some of their proxies to uh, test and show you all today. So he gave me a discount code. Um, so if you want to get 25% off any order on BlitzProxies.com, just use the code Pseudo Shu at checkout and uh, yeah, you should save a nice chunk of money. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, I made a little diagram to explain the basics of networking when it comes to proxies and without proxies. So I'm going to go through that just a little bit so that we can get a good grasp on how proxies change the way that your network requests work. So starting off on the top, we have our basic diagram without proxies. Um, so say we have our chef sitting here in Texas on his devices connected to his Comcast wireless router. Um, this is the IP address that Comcast has given him. And to send a request to adidas.com in Virginia, um, he would be making requests and those requests would hop from router to router until it got to Virginia from Texas. Um, as you can see, we have the three devices here. It doesn't matter which device you have connected to your wireless router at the end of the day, Adidas only sees this IP address. They don't care what your, your private IP is. So um, keep mind of that. It's people think that oh, if I have you know five or ten different devices open all going for Adidas at the same time, it's gonna help your chances. It's really not. Um, mainly because Adidas sees this public IP address given to you by Comcast, and that's typically the way that they delve out um, stuff with Splash, so just keep an eye on that. Um, so let's go down here to without proxies, or with proxies, my, my apologies. So same beginning diagram here. Um, our chef in Texas with his devices connected to his Comcast router, um, but this time he's using proxies, so any of his devices would have proxies entered into it. Um, so all of his traffic, rather than making all of those hops to Virginia, he could have proxies set up in Virginia. And when you have those proxies set up, you're sending your traffic directly to that proxy server and then going to Adidas. Um, as you can see, this cuts down on all the hops required to get to Adidas because he's going somewhere closer to Adidas' main website in Virginia. Um, and as you can see, he's going through multiple ports or connecting through different hops all through the proxies. So this is extremely useful when you're doing anything, especially splash related for Adidas, um, when you may be running two or 300 tasks to get through an easy drop. Um, if you can increase your chances by making yourself look like multiple people, then Adidas is more than likely going to let you through splash. So that's what proxies kind of allow you to do is, is look as if you are different computers coming from different addresses. Um, same goes for any random sneaker, apparel drop, um, Supreme, Kith, any of those guys. Um, proxies are going to help you not only appear to be different people, but get closer to your end target. So say you're all the way around the West Coast sitting in California and you know that most Shopify sites um, are living in Canada you're most likely going to want to buy proxy servers that are in New York or New Jersey because you're, you would be sending a direct request straight to New York or New Jersey and then up to Canada rather than bouncing all the way from the West Coast to Canada. Um, so that's kind of a, a brief expl explanation of how these work. If you all want me to go further in depth, I can. I can go extremely deep with how all of these work. Um, but just for those who kind of didn't have a full understanding of how they communicated, that's how they do it. Um, but again, I can go very deep with this, so if you want it, just leave a comment down in the comment sections below. Um, so let's talk about the different kinds of proxies. Uh, let's go back to blitzproxies.com. So typically when you're buying proxies, you are either faced with IP auth, user pass, or rotating proxies. Um, rotating proxies are also mostly known as back connect. They're not always the same thing, but typically they are. Um, and they're, both IP auth and user pass are ways of authenticating so that you are the only ones using those proxies. Um, IP auth is obviously, as it sounds, it's authenticating based on your IP address. So say we select that. 
um, you'll see that we have options for more than one IP address. Um, typically, you're going to enter your home, home IP. So best way to find that is to go to google.com and type in what's my IP, and it'll tell you what your public IP address is that your cable provider, your fiber provider has given you. Um, and if you have bots running on servers, you're going to get going to want to get the IPs for those as well. So make sure you enter those because it is extremely convenient to be able to have uh, multiple IPs authenticated. Um, the other option is user pass, and this is a way of authenticating using a username and password. Um, typically, those usernames and passwords are provided to you by the proxy provider. You don't really get to check uh, pick what you get, um, but both pretty much act the same way. I personally prefer IP auth just because it's a lot easier, especially with TaskBot, which is one of the main bots that I use. Um, just entering proxies is a hell of a lot easier when it's just IP auth again. Um, third is rotating proxies. I have a little diagram up here somewhere. There you are. Um, so rotating proxies or back connect proxies, um, basically what's happening is the proxy provider is going to give you a single IP address or maybe an IP address with a bunch of ports and every time that you make a request through one of those proxies it's going to go to a, a big pool of IP addresses that they have sitting um, it's gonna take one of those and use it to make the request and it'll do that for about five or ten minutes and then it'll rotate that's why they call them rotating so every five to ten minutes this IP address that you're receiving is gonna change um, this is great for quick uh, drops if you're going for something you know it's going to be at a specific time um, but for anything splash related when you know you're going to be sitting on splash for several hours which can happen for easy drops on Adidas um, you don't want to be using rotating proxies just because every five to ten minutes that connection is going to reset um, and I, it, it's highly advised not to do that during a splash drop just because um, all of your information is going to be changing each time that request changes so keep an eye out for that. Um, obviously, when you're shopping for proxies, you want to make sure you know what you're you're buying. Um, so just be aware of those th those different kinds of proxies. Um, at the same time, you'll see that on some of these providers, they'll offer maybe Shopify proxies versus Adidas proxies um, or Supreme proxies. All of these different proxy providers are buying servers that are meant to work for certain websites. Um, Adidas has done a very good job of cracking down on on these proxy providers um, and kind of banning a lot of data center proxies. So you'll find that anything AWS based or anything that's coming from a big data center is typically not going to work with Adidas. Um, that's because Adidas has gone about trying to ban a lot of these bigger ones. So a lot of these proxy providers have started to move towards smaller providers where their IP addresses may not be known. Um, so typically Shopify is going to be your most common proxy um, and Shopify proxies are extremely easy to make and get for proxy providers just because the IP addresses are not banned. Um, Shopify really only does soft banning or slow ban so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but make sure you are asking these questions when you go to a proxy provider to make sure, you know, hey, I'm going for a Kith drop or hey, I'm going for an Adidas drop. Which ones do I need? Um, and then also double checking to say, will this work on this website? Because the last thing you want to do is spend a couple hundred dollars on proxies and find out they're not even going to work for the certain drop that you're going for. Um, some proxy providers are even nice enough to send you a sample proxy or two just to test for yourself. Um, and we'll go over testing in a little bit. Um, but that is a great way to see not only how fast they are, um, but also whether or not they're going to work on the sites that you're going for. So try and ask those questions. Um, most proxy providers that I've met have been pretty nice and willing to, to share that kind of information. But um, if not, don't get discouraged. Um, some guys just don't like doing that. So um, be aware of that. Uh, proxy providers, obviously, you have Blitz proxies. Um, we have COP proxies, huge, huge proxy provider by uh, Darren Eggins. Uh, Cheat Cook, Proxy Strike, I could name a ton of them. Um, most of them are providing the, the same types of proxies. Um, it really all depends on where those proxies are created. So which server is it is it being created on um, and how many other proxies are running on that server at the same time. So that's where you'll see a lot of performance difference um, is not only location or server strength, but you know 
how many are running on, on that server. Um, so one thing to do when you do buy proxies is to get an idea of where they're located. Typically, you can ask your proxy provider you know, where, where are these IPs sitting, um, but if they don't tell you or if you just got the proxies um, from some random person, then you can go and check. If you just take the top IP address here um, and go to iplocation.net or who is, there are a bunch of different websites where you can kind of do research on different IP addresses. Um, it's important to kind of do this research just to see, you know, if I'm going for a Shopify drop, I want something that's going to be close to New York or New Jersey because it gets me closer to that, that endpoint. So um, just be aware of that. So as you can see, this is an AWS proxy. I made this myself. Um, and sitting in Virginia, um, so yeah, you can do a lot of research based on where these IPs are located just because all of these server providers have to announce, hey, this, this IP is here. So um, if you want to go in deeper and make sure that you're getting what you're paying for, that's one way you can do it. Um, testing proxies. So there are several testing tools. Um, there's this tool, Tester.io, made by Creptool. Uh, it's $5. Uh, check them out on Twitter. I'll leave links down in the description below. Um, but what we're going to do is you're going to add your proxy here. See, we have user pass, pseudo shoe, um, and then we're going to pick a website. So we'll do kit.com. We can run the test, and it'll give you your ping time. Um, we can do all kinds of different sites, google.com, and it, it does that for you. Um, there's also, um, Hype Sniper has a tool called the Proxy Targeting Tool, um, which is also a great tool. I think it's a little bit better in um, how accurate the speed is. So if we do here, you'll see that we're probably getting around two to 300 milliseconds, depending on how quickly I do it. Um, I also have a monitor running on this right now, so could be unhappy. Yeah. Let's try again. Off and kill it, we'll open it again. That's what I want to do. Dot com. There we go. Um, so, as you'll see, so you, that was an AWS proxy, or um, Amazon proxy. So, if we try to ping adidas.com right now, it will fail. Um, that's because, again, that IP address has been banned by Adidas because they know um, this is a data center proxy, this is an Amazon proxy, and they're not going to allow traffic through. Um, but if I had something on a smaller server, like a RAM node or something like that, typically it's going to work with Adidas um, just because they, they have yet to ban a lot of those IP blocks. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole lot to cover with proxies. Just make sure you're doing your research. Make, sh make sure you're asking all these questions. Um, and don't get ripped off. Um, as you can see, you know, you're typically going to be paying $2 a proxy at least, twenty-five or $2.50, um, depending on how quick they are and how popular they are. A lot of these guys will sell out just because it's hard to get a ton of server space on some of these. Um, as you can see, uh, Copt is completely sold out. Um, but just keep an eye out for all of these things. Um, do your research and make sure to test to make sure you are getting what you pay for. Um, because you don't want to be getting scammed on proxies when you're paying three or four hundred dollars for a specific drop. So just be aware of that. Um, other than that, leave any questions down in the comment section below. Um, my next video is going to be uh, going in more detail on TaskBot in adding user pass proxies, um, going over the mobile app, some of that, some of that stuff. Um, so if you have any other um, videos you'd like me to cover, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Yeah, thanks guys.